welcome everybody to Surprisingly Relatable, where we bring you fun and realistic pro tips, knowledge, and hacks you can use for real to build win-win relationships and make work-life balance a reality. My name is Holly Burby, and each week I'll share with you a thought, story, or self-awareness shortcut that will help you to get unstuck, reconnect to your significance, and get focused and clear so you can relate to the people you care about the most. I truly believe that if we want to live a life of purpose and passion, it's time we put away the fake nicey nice and get to the root of how we can actually connect with each other in our homes and communities. That is how we can all succeed and move toward what we each want most. So if you're ready to be surprisingly relatable and evoke positive change that supports uplifts and inspires you and others in the world, you're in the right place. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. First of all, thank you for being patient as I had a little surprise hiatus from recording. I was not anticipating that and I'm back. So I'm really excited to bring you some new episodes. And today what I'm going to be sharing with you is the difference between your calling and your purpose. This topic fell into my lap about a week ago because my biz bestie, Liz Haber Zambrano, who is also an ICF professional certified coach specializing in clarity and life transitions, She and I lead a women's group coaching program once a month called the Feminine Power Society. And we decided for the most recent call with them that we would talk with them about how do you use your feminine energy to transition to a new calling in your life. But it was during the actual call that I was describing an example from my life where this has happened that Liz recognized and was able to make distinct the difference between a calling and your purpose. So I had to share this with all of you and shout out to Liz and her brilliance. I'm going to be having her on the show soon. So I'm excited to share her wisdom and knowledge and experience with you for sure. In today's episode, what I'm going to cover with you is what is the main difference between a calling and your purpose? And then what are some signs you can be on the lookout for that a particular calling in your life is complete? And once you know you're meant to move on to something different, what are the action steps that you should take in order to make that transition as smooth as possible? So let's get into the juiciness here. First of all, a calling and a purpose, your calling and your purpose, they do have things in common. So let's go through those first. Your calling and your purpose both can be things that you are about to do for either yourself, your immediate family, your immediate community, etc., or for the greater good of humanity. Your calling and your purpose can also both be forces, driving forces, that will cause you to propel your life forward, that will propel you in accomplishing goals, keeping you going and motivated intrinsically, meaning your motivation comes from inside of you as opposed to outside of you. Your calling and your purpose, both of those, they're validated by your feelings and your emotions, meaning your feelings and your emotions are guideposts, are feedback for you as to if you are on track in completing your calling and or completing your purpose. And lastly, both your calling and your purpose can be in any area of your life. You can have a calling or a purpose in the the area of your career or in your family, in your home life, your health, spiritual shifts or awakenings, uh, modifying your career, doing something philanthropic. Your calling and your purpose can be in any of those categories. And you might even have a calling or a purpose that is in a number of categories. You may have one in your career, but you also may have a philanthropic goal that you also aim to accomplish in your lifetime as well. So let's lay out the difference between your calling and your purpose, starting with your purpose. Your purpose essentially is how you express yourself in life, period. How you express yourself in life. 
So this is a lifelong goal, lifelong mission that you are on. Your purpose is the overall message that you want your life to have. It's a legacy that you are leaving behind. Think about, you know, a little morbid, but consider when you are no longer here on this earth and you have an epitaph on your gravestone. Think of your purpose as that one line, that one message where everything you've accomplished in your life can link back to that overall message. That is your purpose. Your purpose, again, is something that is lifelong. So I envision this as an umbrella statement that everything will tie back to in time. And it doesn't matter when you define your purpose, if you fulfill your purpose and put that overall message out there through your home life, your personal life, your professional life, your philanthropic endeavors, it all connects back to that one overall theme that you strive to leave behind when you're no longer here. So then what's a calling? Your calling is the specific way that you are going to express your purpose at this time. Your calling is a specific way that you're going to express your purpose at this time. So your calling, this is something that could change every few years. So as an example, this has really shown up a lot lately with in my friendships. A lot of my friends and I have talked about different cycles that we are on where certain number of years will go by and we will have an internal nudge or a God wink or a strong gut or intuitive signal that it is time to shift something in one major area of our life, whether that be shifting something in our relationship or starting a family or opening a new business or starting a nonprofit or going back to church or becoming more involved in their spiritual journey. And that cycle is going to vary. The length of that cycle is going to vary person to person. Probably the most common one that you may have heard of is there is something in relationships people will refer to as the seven year itch. Meaning that if a couple, a romantic couple has been together for seven years and they make it past the seven year mark, that they are more likely to stay together for the long haul. And I think that the seven year itch is a great example of a calling and because it can, it can be something that is cyclical. It's a point of reflection on the timeline of the two of you being together. It's a checkpoint. You can look at the relationship and say, okay, in this relationship that I am in, does everything that we are contributing to each other and to the world and to our family and in our own careers, et cetera, tie back to my purpose and to your purpose? So the seven-year itch is not a point of stop and reflection that works out for everyone, but I like that it's an example of time that society will discuss here and there. Another example in my personal life, I am about to be 43 years old. And when I look over the years of my career from being a teacher to then working in the land of personal and professional development to then starting my business to then taking my business from part-time to full-time, my life in my career in the calling of in the in the area of career my life is on about a 4 year cycle meaning i've noticed when i look back on my life about every 4 years in my career i want to change something and for those of you that have been watching my social media lately i am actually about to celebrate the 3 year anniversary of my business being full time here in a couple of days and I just rebranded my entire business and part of the rebrand is my messaging, starting this podcast, what is important to me, who am I serving? And when I was a teacher, what the shift in my calling looked like, for example, is after four years teaching middle school, I wanted to teach high school. 
You know, I wanted a change in scenery. I wanted a different audience to deliver the message to. So consider that for your life. If you look back on your life in different areas, career, family, spirituality, finances, etc., do you notice any patterns? Any patterns of, well, X number of months or years will go by and I feel compelled to make a shift. That is an example in your life of a shift in your calling in that area, the way that you are expressing your purpose at that time. The last thing I want to point out about your calling is that as you shift your calling, the way that you express your purpose, your pillars of your life are going to remain the same, meaning the areas of your life that you deem important. For example, your family, your free time, your recreation, your faith, your career, your home, your kids, etc. All those categories will stay the same. However, when you have a shift in your calling, if it isn't in one specific pillar, for example, if you're not shifting a calling in the area of career and you feel just as if your life is taking an overhaul in general, It just means that pillars in your life are going to be jostled in such a way that you are going to give them different amounts of time. So a pillar of your life that used to be the front runner of your time, attention, and intention is now something that may be on the back burner for a little bit. It may not receive all of your attention and and energy, resources, focus, etc. So it's important to understand that when you have a shift in your calling in your life, it could be in one specific area or it could just feel like you're getting a life overhaul in general. But at the end of the day, your purpose, your overall message, the umbrella message of your life, the legacy of your life, that will remain the same. And shifting your calling just means that the pillars of your life are going to go through a little bit of a makeover, a little bit of let's rearrange how things go and how things are done. So what are some signs that your calling is complete and that you're ready to move on to a new calling or transition to a new calling? The first sign is that whatever that action is, it's no longer exciting for you. There's no longer passion behind it. Essentially, it just doesn't feel fun anymore. It feels like work, And there might even be a sense of dread around it that before it used to feel good and used to look forward to it. And then that kind of goes away. So that's where I was saying earlier that your calling and your purpose both are going to give you signs and transition through your emotions and your feelings. Your emotions and your feelings, how you feel about these things in your life could be an indication that one calling is complete and you're ready to transition to a new one, a new expression of your purpose. Another sign that your calling is complete or about to be is that when you think about growing in the same area, the same category with the same people and the same circumstances, oh man, another sign is that eh, that doesn't really sound fun anymore. (laughs) Like that doesn't sound fun. It doesn't sound exciting. You're like, ah, I'm just kind of done with this circle or this commute or this industry. You'll just have, again, an overall feeling of perhaps dread, but even considering the people and the circumstances, that doesn't even work anymore. Probably an example of this is when I was teaching I said that there was a year where I wanted to shift from teaching middle school to teaching high school. I wanted a change of scenery. And on those moments in that calling where I was exhausted or depleted, I would think to myself, okay, but man, I love the kids. I love the kids. My coworkers are awesome. The school is awesome. I know I'm making a difference. This is fulfilling my overall purpose. I stay. I stay with it right? But there did come a point in time when I was about to leave teaching in my 10th year that it didn't feel fun anymore. I had that experience of dread. And when I thought about education as an industry that I wanted to work in, or when I thought about the the climate of what it was like at times to work with unhappy people, to work alongside some colleagues, not all, 
not all, but some colleagues who were just couldn't shake the negativity or couldn't try to see solutions. I just had a really negative feeling then about the industry and thinking about the people and the circumstances like, oh, I like the kids and my coworkers are great and the school is awesome. Even that didn't save it in my mind, right? So I think sometimes we will stay in a calling because we do like the people and the circumstances or the work flexibility, whatever. But there will come a time where those perks will not feel like perks anymore. And that could be a sign that you're calling in that particular arena is ready to be shifted, adjusted, made over. And the final sign that your uh, calling is about to be complete is that your body, your physical body feels exhausted, tired, and here's a big one, pulled in multiple directions. So it might not even be just your physical body. I really should say here that you as a whole, your physical body, your emotional body, your mental body, your spiritual body, all of those may feel like you are being pulled in different directions, exhausted, depleted, and no matter what you do, you cannot seem to replenish the energy in those parts of your wholeness. That could be a sign that your calling is complete and it's time to move on to the next thing. So that's the difference between your calling and your purpose and some signs as to how you know that it's time to transition to a new calling within your purpose. But what do you actually do, right? The theories are great, the definitions are great, but what do you actually do when you have that sense that it's time to move on to something different? So now I wanna tell you just that. And again, I wanna give a shout out to Liz Haber Zambrano because she and I, compiled these steps together, these methods together. And I have her permission to share it on this show because I think it is something that will really serve so many of you. So let's go with the first one. The first key to taking action and shifting your calling and expressing your purpose in a new way is to allow yourself to emote. And what that means is you allow your feelings, you allow your emotions as you step from this portion of your life to a new one. And the reason that allowing yourself to feel all the emotions that go with it, sadness, frustration, stress, grief, you can even feel like the grieving process, releasing these emotions, allowing the emotions to move through your physical body and leave your physical body creates a space within you. And that space within you is where new ideas can come in clarity can come in and it allows you to hear your gut, your intuition, to hear God more clearly so that you feel you are guided in some way or multiple ways. Now, for some of you, emoting, feeling those feelings and emotions will, yes, feel uncomfortable because it'll seem like you're moving through a dark tunnel and you don't know where you're going and you cannot see the step in front of you. And then as you move through this tunnel, you might see light ahead of you, but then also the tunnel might have side tunnels and you might take a wrong turn and spend a lot of time going the wrong way. And then you have to backtrack and that can take something that feels uncomfortable and add to it a sense of guilt, self-judgment. Why did I do this? I shouldn't have done this. I should just go back to the beginning. I shouldn't make this transition. Very, very, very common. So allow yourself to recognize when you're transitioning from one calling in your life to another, recognize your emotions, feel your emotions, allow them to be felt and expressed and talked about because that is, again, making room for new ideas and things to come to you uh, through intuition, God, your gut check, et cetera. This requires a quiet confidence it requires trust in your intuition, it requires trust in God, and it will happen. And the discomfort is normal, there's nothing wrong, this is very common, and it will pass as you continue to move forward. The second thing that you want to do as you are transitioning from one calling to another, in addition to emoting, is to practice receiving. I cannot stress enough how important receiving is is during this time. And what this can look like essentially is leaning on your resources, free resources, 
nonprofit organizations that support people like you going through those particular situations financially or in your family life or in raising children or in starting a new job or finding a home. Look for free resources, right? Look them up, lean on people, utilize them, do your research, use the Google machine, right? (laughs) Like you can figure it out. Ask your friends and family and community members or colleagues for places you can find resources like that or at low cost, but also ask those same people for advice. Ask them for assistance. Allow people to step up and support you, yes, in tangible ways, but also emotionally. And here's something you should know about people in general. Human beings, some people are terrible at receiving. No judgment if that's you. I've been there. But some people, their greatest joy in life is lending a hand to someone who really needs it. So the next time you want to lean on resources or ask someone for something or ask for a favor, remind yourself that there are people on this planet where part of their life purpose, life purpose, overall message is to lift up others and support others. So when you go to those people and need to lean on those people or ask them for advice or resources, etc., you are supporting them in fulfilling their ultimate purpose. Nothing makes them happier than being there for you. Another part of receiving is knowing that these same people or strangers through podcasting, etc., They are there to encourage you. And I love this breakdown of encourage. Encourage, E-N, right? Encourage means to loan your courage to someone else. So you may not feel when you're in that dark tunnel and transitioning from one calling to another, you might not know where you're going. You may not have the clarity or the ideas. However, The people around you, they still feel courageous in their own life or even in that same particular category of your calling. And when they are there to support you and you receive it, they are lending you their courage for the time being and courage. So it's worth it. Ask for people for support and allow yourself to receive it. Say thank you. It doesn't need to be reciprocal don't have to do something in return because they did something for you that actually takes away from the giver. So make sure that you express gratitude, but there's nothing necessarily that you need to do unless agreed upon in return for that offer. And lastly, the action you can take when you're transitioning from one calling to another, in addition to emoting and feeling your feelings, in addition to receiving and asking for support around you, is to include internal reflection in your life. Your inner world, your inner world. So some of you might refer to this as your intuition. Some of you may hear this as the voice of the Holy Spirit or God within you. That is what will guide you in this time. That is what will guide you in this time. But the only way that that can guide you in this time is if you take the time to sit and listen, if you take the time to internally reflect. So this is where self-awareness can be useful for a certain period of time, but self-awareness is you assessing your thoughts. Internal reflection is coming to a quiet moment with yourself and being curious and asking yourself, what am I feeling right now? What do I want to emote right now? What do I need right now? What is the support that I really could use in this moment? And then sitting in silence and allowing yourself to listen to your intuition, to God, to the Holy Spirit. Have a journal if you want to nearby. Jot down things that come to you in this time. But it's really important to notice when that inner dialogue when your mind wants to take over and drown you out from listening to your gut, from listening to your intuition, from listening to God. 
So sometimes our mind will tell us that we will feel better. We don't need to have the internal reflection, but that we would feel better if we went and took some toxic actions instead. So rather than take the time for internal reflection, we may use our time to numb ourselves out with food or drink, alcohol, watching too much TV. We may isolate ourselves, avoid others. We might spend way too much time scrolling on social media because we're completely checked out. We might avoid time with family and friends, people that we care about. People might ask you if they can help and you're refusing the help and being stubborn and saying things like, oh, I have to do it on my own. I can't trust anyone to do it. Only I'm going to be the one to do it the way that I want it to be done. There's no good in this. Might even start telling yourself, well, nobody really cares. I'm shifting in my life from this calling to another. That is all toxic behavior. And those are actions, the numbing out actions are not actions that your internal guide, that your intuition, your gut, your God, Holy Spirit, etc., would ever tell you. So listen in silence for the message. Have a, a time for internal reflection and allow that to be what guides you, not your mind and the obnoxious chitter chatter that's just looking to beat you down in your mind. So if you are wanting to increase how easily you can listen to that internal reflection, your intuition, your God, etc. Ways to increase your intuitive nature and trust that the message you're getting is right is to do things that are fun. (laughs) So that could look like incorporating movement in your life, prayer, meditation, talking it out with someone, joyful activities, take time to relax, Have a creative venture, something that you can go and make. Dance, listen to music, again, feel your emotions and just go play. That is what's going to open up you as you internally reflect on what is happening and it will tell you the next step to take while you are in that tunnel. You do not have to do that alone. You don't have to (laughs) tell yourself that nobody wants you to lean on them. That is not true. You don't have to tell yourself that I have to be, you know, a statue with no emotions this entire time. That is not true. This process does not have to be miserable. It can be a time of play and fun and freedom. And overall, again, your new calling, its only objective is to line up to your purpose. What is the overall message you want your life to have? And does it feel good when you're in that calling? Do you enjoy the environment? Do you enjoy the people that you are around? Does it make you feel like you're living a life that is congruent with the reason why you're here? I hope this was supportive for you today. I know that when Liz laid it out like this on our coaching call, it was so mind-blowing to me. So again, thank you, Liz. And I'm really interested to hear What is your purpose? What is your calling? Or overall, what was your greatest takeaway from today's episode? Take a moment, please, and screenshot this episode. Share it to your stories on social media. You can tag me on Instagram at holly.burby.coaching. And I would love for you to share in that screenshot your greatest takeaway. And what is the step that you are going to take in transitioning this current calling and expression of your purpose in your life to something bigger, something greater, and what feels best for you. That's all I have for today. So until next time, I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening. And if you love this episode and know of someone else who's passionate about creating authentic relationships with people, please pass them on to me. It would mean the world to me if you help me get this cause and this message out to as many listeners as I can. So please, if you liked what you heard, I'd super appreciate it if you'd take 30 seconds and leave me a five-star review and share this with your friends. And until next time, show love always in all ways. And may you discover that we're all surprisingly relatable.